Welcome back to the second video in this tutorial series. In the last video we had a look at this app that we'll be building, this finance app. And we also started setting up our project in VS Code. In this video we'll start building out the layout. Specifically this header section here that shows the user's name, their little profile image, the stats button, as well as this log out button. We'll also have a look at building out this balance section and these expenses over here and these animations when hovering over the expenses. We'll also add the stats section using chart.js, which dynamically shows the expenses and where they've been allocated. If you do get stuck at any point in this tutorial and something isn't working correctly, I've added a link to the GitHub repo in the description of this video. Let's get started. Right, first off, let's start off that development server again. We should be able to open up our application on localhost 3000. To make things a bit more readable, I'll just put the browser side by side. First, if we have a look at the final product, we'll notice the background's got this dark sort of color. So let's start by styling our project as well. In the globals.css file, we'll add this dark color to the body of the page. In Tailwind, we can actually do that by extending the base layer. We could do that by typing add layer and base. We can add styling to the body element by typing in body. Typically you would type in CSS styles like this. So just following the normal sort of CSS styling convention. But in Tailwind can, we can actually do something slightly different by applying these utility classes. We can start off by typing apply followed by these Tailwind specific utility classes. In this case, we want to change the background color. So we can type in background dash the color that we want. In this case, we want slate and 900. So that's the darkest color available. Let's save this. If we go back to our project. We can see the background changing color. You might notice that this text is very dark at the moment. So let's change the default text color to something light. In fact, we'll just make the default text color text white. And let's save. We can see that change reflecting immediately. Next, we'll start with this navigation menu up here. So there's basically two sections to this navigation menu. There's a left side that contains the profile image and the user's name. On the right hand side, we've got this little statistics button. When we click on that button, we want the browser to scroll down to the stats section over here. This is basically used for if the page gets too long, we can click this button and it will automatically take us down to that section. Next to the stats button, we've got the sign out button over here, which will just sign the user out of the application. Let's start with this nav. Let's open the page.js file. Let's remove our heading over here and let's create something that's a bit more semantically correct. Let's add our header component by creating a header tag. Within the header tag, we'll sort of split the header into two sections. We'll have the section on the left for this profile and name, and the section on the right for the statistics button and the sign out button. So let's start with the left side first. It's always recommended to add comments to your code, so just to keep things nice and structured. We'll start off with this user section on the left. We can add a div, and in this div we'll have our profile image, followed by our username. You can add an image by entering an image tag. We have to just specify a source and it's recommended to specify an alt tag as well. We'll just add self-closing tags at the end. For the name, I'll just add a small tag and we'll just hard code the name for now. Hi, Leon. For now, we'll just grab a sample image online. For this, I'll just go to this site over here, thispersondoesnotexist.com. This is an AI generated image, so this person apparently does not exist. So we'll just grab a link to this image. We can right click the image, go to copy image address, and we'll paste it in our code. And we'll give our alt tag a value, something like profile image. And we'll save this. Looking at our app, things don't quite look that right. We've got a massive image over here and the text just below it. So let's fix up this profile image. We'd like our image to have this small little 
circular effect like this. So let's go back to our image. What we can do is wrap our image in a div. We can give our div a couple of styles. We'll start off by giving our div a height, something like 40px. We'll give it a fixed width as well. We'll make that 40px as well. And we'll round the corners full, which means the rounding is basically 50%. It should give us a round div. We save these changes and have a look. Right, we can see the image is smaller, but it's not quite round yet. The reason for that is the image in our image tag is actually square still, and it's overflowing outside of our div. We can prevent the overflowing by adding another class called overflow hidden. Saving that, you'll notice the image is now nice and round. Just to ensure that the image doesn't stretch, we can add a few classes to the image itself. For the image, we'll make the width full. We'll make the height full as well, and we'll set object cover. Right, now that we've got our image sorted, we also want the name to be next to the image and not below it. For this, we'll add classes to the div that wraps the image and the name. Cool. We'll add flex. We'll add a display of flex to this class. We'll add a display of flex to this div. Items center. After saving that, you'll see that the text has now moved down to the center. We also want to add some space between the image and the text. We can do that by adding a class of gap and two. Right, I think that looks great. Next, we'll add the right side of the navigation, which includes this statistics icon over here and the button. For this, we'll add a new section to our header. We can call this nav for navigation. This represents the right side of our navigation. Our navigation will consist out of two divs, one for the stats icon and another for the logout button. I'll just add text for now and save. We can see these two icons reflecting on the page, but we do want them to be aligned to the right. And we do want these items to be next to each other as well, and not below each other. First, let's put these two items next to each other. Back in our navigation, we'll add a few classes. We'll add flex again, which will place those two items next to each other. Next, we'll just align them to the center and we'll give them a gap, let's say of two. Now we can align the left and right side as well. So we'll just add a class name to the header itself. We'll use flex, items, center, and this time we'll add justify between. That's looking great. Now we've got our profile image and our name to the left, and we've got our stats icon and the logout button to the right. Let's now replace the stats icon text with an actual icon. In order to add icons to a React project, I highly recommend using this package called React Icons. It's very easy to set up. All you need to do is execute this command over here. I'll just copy this. We'll go back to our editor and let's stop our dev server for now. I'll paste in that command and hit execute. This will install the React Icons package. Done. Let's start up our development server again. We can now search for a suitable icon in React Icons. I'll have a link to React Icons in the description of this video. We can search for icons over here. We'll just enter something like stats and grab an icon that looks good to us. I'll actually go ahead and use this one over here. Clicking on the icon will automatically copy it to the clipboard. Back in our project, we can import that icon. So I'll go to, I'll just say, I'll say import from react icons slash, and it's preferable to select the package that this icon exists in. Just as a reminder, this is the icon name that we copied. It starts with IM. So over here, I'll just select IM and we'll import IM stats bar from react icons IM. We can now grab this component over here 
and replace our stats icon text with this component. With this icon, it's a self-closing component as well. I'll just hit save. Great, we can now see the icon showing up in the site. It is quite small at the moment, but we can increase the size by going to the component and giving it some classes. We'll start off by giving it a class name of text dash to XL. That looks much better. Let's move on to our logout button. Let's replace this logout button text with an actual button. In our code, we can replace this text with a button and we can add some text like sign out. And we'll add some classes to the button. We can add some padding left and right by using PX. So that's for the X axis. We'll make it four units. We can add padding to the vertical axis with PY. We'll add two. We'll give it a text of small. We'll capitalize the text and we'll round the edges. We also need to add some color because it's a log up button. We'll add a background of red, 600. We'll add a border of red also 600 let's also make the text readable so we'll make the text white let's save that's looking good because we'll be using buttons throughout this project it's a good idea to make these styles reusable so to do that we'll go back to our globals.css file this time we'll add some button styling in the utilities layer so we can do that by typing add layer utilities and we'll create our own class called btn which will just be the default styling for buttons so let's move some of the styling to btn specifically the padding the text size the capitalization let's just grab all of this we'll cut it from here we'll go back to our btn styling we'll start off by saying apply and we'll paste our classes here we can now add in that utility class that we just created called btn and save we will see that styling show up here so going forward whenever we create new buttons we can just call the btn class to style it i think it's safe to assume that we'll have some other styles for buttons as well at the moment we've got this red color that's ideal for a log out button for other types of buttons we might just want to show something else perhaps like these buttons with the green text or maybe something with an outline we can create these reusable classes as well. So let's go back to our globals.css file. We'll create a new class called btn danger for this red sort of button. So for button danger, we'll apply any styles that are specific to this danger button. These padding classes should be generic for all buttons as well as the text size. The text color will be specific to this danger button as well as the background and border colors that we can move as well. The rounded class is also something that's generic for all buttons, so we'll just leave it here. I'll save this. I'll go back to our page file. So just after BTN, I'll also add this new class for BTN Danger and save. There we go. Now we've got this Danger button and we've added reusable CSS classes. Another style that we should add to this button is the animation on hover. When we have a look at the final product, you'll see this button grow when we hover over it. If we wanted to, we could add that animation on the button class, so it will apply to all objects with this BTN class. But since I want this animation to play for all buttons of all class types, I'm actually going to add it in the base layer. So this way we'll add the style to all HTML elements of type button, not just elements with the class of BTN. I hope that makes sense. We can do that by adding button and we'll apply some styles. We will add styles on the hover state, specifically scale to make it grow. Let's save that and have a look. Back in our project, when I hover over this button, we do see it grow slightly, but it's lacking that animation speed that we see in the final product. Let's add that. We can do this by adding transition, all, and we'll add an animation duration of 100. Let's save. Much better. We're almost done with our navigation. There is one issue though. We can see the items are touching the sides of the page, and when we resize the page, it just keeps growing. 
So what we'll do is just wrap the navigation within a container that will limit the max width as well as add some padding to avoid these items from touching the sides. Firstly, we'll wrap all of this content in a new div. As you can see, that broke our alignment over here. So what we'll do is actually move these classes to this wrapping div. We save that, this all looks fine. We'll actually now apply a container to the header itself. We'll do this by adding some class names. We'll add a container, which is a Tailwind CSS class. We'll specify a max width of 2XL. We'll add some padding to the sides. We'll add some padding to the top and bottom. And we'll center the content with MXR2. We can now see that we've got some spacing at the top and the sides. And when we resize the browser window, we can see that maximum with kick in. Excellent. That wraps up the navigation for now. Let's move on to the main content. So before we start adding the rest of the content to the page, well, our root page, you might notice that this page is going to get quite big when we start adding the rest of the content and the stat bar, etc. So what we're going to do is take our header content and create a separate component for it and then just include the component in our logic. To create a component, we can create a new folder in the root of our project called components. We'll create a new file called navigation.js. To create a React component, all you have to do is create a function. You can give it any name that you want. I'll just call my nav. This function needs to return some sort of JSX code, like header. We then need to export this function as default. Export default nav. We can then go to page.js. We can grab all of our header content. I'll actually cut it. Go back to navigation.js and I'll replace my header with that content. I'll also grab all dependencies. In our case, it's only this icon. I'll cut that as well and I'll add it to our navigation component. We can now include components by importing them. So I'll just type in import nav from. You might recall that when we set up Next.js, it asked us if we wanted to use aliases. So it created this paths attribute over here. We can use that to very quickly refer to components in the project. All we have to do is type in the add symbol slash, and that will give us an autocomplete. We can go to components slash navigation. Now we can just refer to the component like this. Everything still seems to be working, but now we are using a reusable component in our project. However, ideally we don't want to import the navigation in this page. If we had more than one page in our project, we would have to repeat this import each and every time. So how do we avoid repeating ourselves? Well, that's where the layout.js file comes in. We can import our navigation in the layout component. And Next.js will automatically apply changes to this layout file to all sub pages in the project. So we will remove the navigation import from page, we will go back to layout, we'll import our component at this level, and we'll add it to the body tag. Please make sure that you're adding this component to the body tag and not outside of it. You will get errors if you do that. Let's remove the navigation component from the, from the main page. I'll just add some text for now. Right, after making that change, we can see my text showing up as hello, and we can see the navigation being imported successfully. Now we've got a reusable navigation component, just to keep the code clean. We're importing the navigation in our layouts file, and we're referring it to layouts. The nice thing now is if we had to create more pages for our application, the navigation will always be imported at the top. Right, as I'm editing this lesson, I'm realizing the video is getting quite long and we still have a lot to cover. So in the interest of getting something out to you guys, I've decided to split this layout video into two parts. So I'll upload part two a day or two after this video goes live. I hope you enjoyed this so far and I really hope you're learning something new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.